Gertner oil pump from a near 100 year old Terot motorcycle. Um, as you can see there, it's been badly sort of worn away and the oil pipe in feed fitting is just destroyed completely where you, where you screw it in. There's a little hole through there where the oil feed goes in um, and you can drill that from the other side with a, a little anti sort of siphon valve taken out. Uh, so the plan is, I tried the old uh, that stuff, um, Durafix alloy welding brazing stuff but it would melt but it just wouldn't stick to it I don't know what the alloy is and it's very sort of full of pop holes and porosity and that so the plan is I've milled it away where the existing thread was I've made a little fitting out of a, a hose tail fitting turned it down to small enough that's M8 by 1 I'm just about to drill and tap that M8 by 1 the body's quite substantial and then once this is screwed and locked tightened in place I'll re-drill that little hole at the back there from the other way into this fitting. So uh, I'll just change this over and drill that through uh, 7mm ready for the M8 M8 by one tap. That I've drilled down I drill nine millimeters deep with a seven millimeter drill bit for um, M8 by one. We'll put a tap in and we'll get a thread in there. Now I've started it with the uh, with the mill. I'll just take the uh, take it out, tap it by hand because I don't want to go too deep with this body. So there's our fitting done and our threading done down in the hole there and. If I put a, an aluminium washer on, now it doesn't quite seal on this face where it's eroded away or scraped away. And I don't want to go any deeper because of being into the, the feed hole through there. So that's just going to provide a bit of a seating on there like that. Now to tighten that up, all I'm going to do is use... Uh, an ER collet holder. I'm going to put some thread lock around it. So I'll do that now. Enough of that round, and especially to that face. So, not to over tighten that. So now that's in like that, and we've got a mechanical bond, and we let that go off, and then I will drill through the hole which goes down there, where the uh, the drip feed tube fits behind 
the drip tube, which is actually broken on this one as well, is a, a ball trapped by the drip tube and then a, there's a little spring goes inside as well. So it's a one-way valve going sort of up, upwards if you like. And then to just make this look a little bit better, um, I'm going to build that up with some um, something like quick steel or uh, like Devcon type putty. Uh, you may ask why not weld it. Well, it's, as you can see, it's very porous. I've had a go with the um, Jorafix and that didn't take to it. I don't want to risk doing more damage than is necessary on something that's that's this old and this uh, this hard to replace. So. Uh, that's the good mechanical fix and we'll do a, a bit of a cosmetic repair around there and it'll just leave a little stub sticking out for the pipe to go on. After a little bit of filling with some cargo quick steel and a little bit of filing and shaping, there we go. That'll uh, that'll do the job. So I, I did try to do it, build it up with that um, Jura fix, but it wouldn't take to it. I didn't want to go near it with a TIG welder because it's uh, almost irreplaceable. So. Uh, yeah, at worst it can have a little bit of paint to tidy it up. What's that one? The next stage for this Girton oil pump is to make a few missing and broken bits. This is a, a piece out of the end there that holds a, a little plate that the cam rides on. To oscillate the the pump mechanism in this pump, uh, as you can see, the ends broke off. So we have got go over to the lathe in a second. I've turned a boss down on a piece of aluminium, and uh, that is going to be that. And we're down to diameter there. So you put a slight chamfer on it, and then I'll get the diameter of, estimate the diameter of this at its widest point, turn that uh, shoulder down to it, part it off to, to the thickness of that. There it is faced up and uh, having reversed it in the, the collet up there and I've took the liberty of making it one millimetre thicker just to improve its uh, durability a bit. The screw threads for holding this on, the small piece, are M3.5 or at least that's what it's cleaned up as a tap size, which in the UK is the same as socket and switch box screws, and they're sort of a countersunk underneath with a domed head, which I think is called Philister, something like that. So we'll just countersink those instead of counter boring them when we get to that stage and use a couple of those socket box screws to uh, to retain it. I've set the bit up on the rotary table on the mill um, and a drill that's 3.8 we're centered over the spigot and my hole centers need to be 20.1 millimeters between centers so I'll just offset 10.05 drill hole offset 20.1 drill hole and we'll get two holes popped in there that mimic uh, two holes that would be in that piece.
trying to start this without a pilot. So just uh, gentle little pecks. established. Now move over 20.1 the other way. The next step is to put this little hole in here which is 1.7 millimeters so I've gone from the center point outwards to the edge and found where the edge is then in that's in about one millimeter from the edge and half the width of the drill which is um, the drill 1.7 so 0. Point whatever. Um, and I'm over that position then I've got to rotate the table 45 degrees to set that which is at 45 degrees to that centre line there uh, you could do it with the DRO you could do it with the table whichever way you want there we are rotated round that was our starting position that little dot just there I've rotated 45 degrees there's the little dot where the tip will be there and if we look at the position on the old part we can see we're about the right sort of relationship there so I'll get this hole drilled and we'll see what that looks like with the hole drilled the next bit I need to do is this little scallop out of here where the needle goes the adjustment needle that's a ball end mill there which is about the right sort of size but it obviously works its way upwards up a little slope so rather than set it up on an angle plate <coughs> excuse me I'll um, <coughs> I'll just sort of manually manipulate this one to get that uh, little groove start and I can always finish it off with a with a half round file. Not the easiest to see but there we have a, a close approximation of that groove in there. There's a countersink that's put in um, with uh, a bit of a mark out there roughly the shape it needs to be so all I'll do for that is uh, approximately file it. There's a cut out at the back cleaned up with a file. The angle of there between there and there is about 65 degrees when you measure it so I've just got this set back up in the dividing head and um, I'm sort of doing half the angle about 32 and a half ish degrees cut that way and then we'll turn it and we'll do that way just to get the rough shape of this uh, this to follow that uh, that pattern we're working from. Set to approximate angle there take the same depth of cut that side as that side then I'll just turn the table around and take them off as well then we can dress it up with a the file there's our little um, end cap remade uh, counter sunk on that side instead of counter board just for simplicity I've done a couple of little um, M3.5 screws there their um, socket box type, I think I've probably mentioned that before. This recording's a little bit later than the other ones. Uh, so we'll, we'll get this reassembled 
um, very roughly. I'm not trying to uh, restore it. He can um, the owner can redo it again properly because I believe he's got proper gaskets. I made a rough gasket there for the end cap, but I think he's got proper gaskets for it. So that uh, that little pin goes in the end of there. And that plate. Some of the bits I still haven't got. I was going to be making a, a cover there, but he's actually found one in France, so uh, there's no problem there. And we'll just oil these up a little bit, just to make assembly a bit better. I've cleaned all these bits off with a bit of brake cleaner and things so just to just for now and say depends how far how far the owner wants to go with this. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's just for sort of uh, sort of display or um, actually trying to use it because he's got sort of an antique shop. Um, so it may just end up kind of going on on display in the window or something like that. Right, which way does that assemble? It's got to go that way, and it? That's got to go in. So that's got to go in there. So let's put that end cap on first. Now, I've got a little book here, there's a new fibre washer there, I've got a little book and it shows a spring. And it ain't that one, oh, it is, it's that one, isn't it? There's a spring in the end of there, that's it. <laughs> yeah. For, sorry if I'm going out of picture here, I'm trying to stay in, um, stay in and work around the camera. That's the baby, it's like that. Let's just put that on there. So I'm just roughly roughly reassembling this for him. That's on there. That spring goes up to there. So that goes in there. So that's got something to push against that plunger. And then put a bit more oil down there. These are um, sort of four stroke with a, a total loss oiling system. And so it's a bit, a bit like a two stroke pump type of thing. So that, that turns there. That rotates that barrel. And that barrel also oscillates up and down. Uh, which is what this little assembly is for here this little plate on there is pinned by that little pin that we did and that stops it rotating so put my gasket on it a rough gasket bit of oil on that stick oil and we'll grease them or put a bit of well seal on for now that'll do for what we're doing. Right. Then somehow we've got to get that plate on and make it stop in the right place. Sorry if my voice goes a little bit quiet here. I'm, I'm kind of thinking to myself as we uh, as we do this. That's it. Like that. Two little screws.
may be actually better without the spring and the other side pushing against it, but it'll go. It'll work. What you have got to be careful of is that everything sits right and I think that other cap probably got broken. Well, it might have been actually just corrosion but looking at this it's easy to get it wrong and put it under force if you don't bring it down square. So all the pilgrim pump people and the Gertner pump people out there watching this we go oh no you don't do that you don't do that no. that's turning free on the little thing so that should be going yeah you can't see this but down that hole the, the holes there I can see the the little gizmo rotating at the moment we're on no um we're on maximum stroke I think it is. So this little thing here. Now this is interesting, I think oh it's still in there. I thought I probably lost it. There's a little spring in there. I've got to be careful of and there's on this little little bar there's a flat end and a rounded end I think you want the rounded end would make sense to be outwards towards them little dimples under there and this is as I've probably mentioned before this is also splitting down here so it's got to be sort of carefully set and not just raunched up with uh, with maximum brute force on this. Sort of push the plunger down and set the setting, and then push the plunger back up rather than try and turn the turn the thing against the plunger, because otherwise it's going to end up breaking. So. I have no idea what the set is going to be, so that'll do for now. That rotates nicely. The direction of the arrow, yeah. That's okay. So that's roughly it. Um, he's got, he's getting the little, there's a little beak goes in there. Um, that, that, that little ball there. Tiny little tiny ball bearing sits in the bottom of there and then this little beak that's broken off goes in the top of the little oil spout and then there's a little covered glass and a cap over um, I haven't got the beak but he has so I'm dropping that little ball in there so we don't lose it and then this little thing to get it out I prob can't remember whether I videoed it or not because it was a while ago um, I'm just going to pop that back in to, just to retain the ball and you can just pull that out with a with a little screw threaded in the end so I just need a little, little punch of some description just to tap that down with it so, don't be very tight it's like a little taper that's it that's as far as I can go with it um, so nothing's nothing's massively tight at this stage uh, nip that screw up at the end it says trying to get back into the shot it's over that way it's like working in a mirror just nip that up just nip them up slightly That's it. Fully turning. Beautiful. That's it. That's as far as I go with this. Um, so it's, it's kind of saved it. If he wants to paint it, he can. Um, 
if you want to make a little brass ferrule for over the end of the pipe you can but yeah you saw what it was at the beginning we can rewind the tape or look back at the beginning of the video and uh, at least it's got it back into one piece now I apologise if some bits and stages of this video are missing because I've done it in it's been spread over a, a, a couple of months actually <laughs> Um, although you'll see it as one piece because I've been, uh, been busy over Christmas and then uh, been off with the old uh, stood down for Covid thing that's going on so there we go one Gertner pump sort of uh, sort of tidied up shall we say as opposed to uh, Restored. That's, uh, that's another one. So hopefully we shall get back onto the BSA project. Um, it's a bit cold at the moment, and don't like being in the workshop when it's cold. I'm not a very hardy person anymore. I used to be dedicated to the cause and work for all hours and things, but not so much. I prefer being warm in front of a telly. We'll see how we get on. Um, so I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.